What have I done? Villagers with low resolve will start leaving, increasing the queen's impatience. Keeping resolve exceptionally high will grant passive reputation over time. You can win just by making people happy. Satisfying your villagers' needs with complex foods, homes, and services will increase their resolve. Each species has a different mix of needs. It's hard to please everyone all the time. That's true. That's why we got type A streams and type B streams. Farmers can plant only on farm fields, and those can only be built on fertile soil. Crops planted in the first season drizzle and harvested during the second clearance. Build a farm, harvest grain, and serve some ale in a tavern. All right, I can do that. Hey, Anel, how do you feel about the TOS changes? Honestly, touching grass is undefeated. I knew that they changed TOS two days ago, but I didn't look into it at all. Uh, and I saw that they reverted or augmented the changes today, and I didn't look into it at all. But that didn't stop me from making a joke because I went into the Discord and typed, Snip Snap! Snip Snap! Snip Snap! Jan, you have no idea what three TOS reversions, the effect that three TOS reversions has on a man. But I'm just here playing the same stuff I'm playing to begin with. Small farm. Okay. Reputation points. You can gain rep by completing orders, exploring your surroundings, or keeping your villagers happy. With time, your villagers will become accustomed to their living conditions and the reputation threshold will increase, forcing you to satisfy more complex needs. I think that's true. To acquire reputation from exploring, you'll have to cut your way through the forest. But beware, these events can be challenging. Okay. Understandable. Mm, food production. Small farm. I guess I don't want to build it on top of those eggs. I don't really want to build it on top. Is, is there, can somebody tell me, by the way, is there a negative to building the farm in the middle of the crops? Like, does this cost me four tiles? You lose the plots. Okay. So we, we should try to find a place to build that gets access to as many of the plots as possible. You know what, I'll just say that that's good enough for now. Now, how can we make you happy? You're content. What do you, what's your needs? Basic housing, that's a pretty good one. We could start with that. Human housing, porridge, a complex food. Well, they wanted us to make beer at a tavern as well. Small farm is all we got for now though. Now we'll go, small farm has no farm fields nearby. Do we have to assign a farm field? What, what about this, bro? Bro, this is a farm field right here. You have to build them. Oh. And then they'll come. He's a genius. Even if it's not getting all of them, we take those. City buildings, decorations. We have no housing yet. Orders. Build six farm fields, we get our next thing. Okay, I think I'm, I'm comfortable taking it up to speed 1.5 at least for a minute here. They do be building. Our orders have been completed to the extreme. This has given us access to shelter. We have how many citizens? We have 11 citizens right now. Um, we can build shelter, but we only, we don't have enough wood. Do we have a woodcutter's camp? We do have, we have access to all the camps, brother. We've got access to every single camp. So let's put the woodcutter's cabin in such a place that it allows us to easily access a glade or two. Look at that. The man's a damn genius. Two woodcutters camps and two shelters. Understandable. Okay, the second one then. The second one we'll simply put down right here and move it later. And then you gotta, oh, I know what you need to do, brother. You need to have beavers working at this one. 
and then you need to mark some trees for deletion so that you can access the glades. Man, lizards ain't doing anything, huh? Two lizards and a human being. And then we need to build two shelters close to the hearth. I guess you could build them as long as they're within the golden circle. And I'm not talking about Kingsman. Two houses right there. We'll call that a neighborhood. And then choose a cornerstone. When do we, when do we get access to the cornerstones? For me right now, it feels like they're coming randomly, but I'm sure that's not the case. Two houses in Fair Verona. I like that. I'm going to say plus two. Oh, every year. Every year. I'm going to take five barrels per minute. Me when I'm driving a Hummer. <laughs> Good choice. They do be having bad fuel economy, right? That's like the, the number one thing everybody knows about them. When you meet a baddie, but your two houses are unalike in dignity, it's the worst feeling in the world, brother, for sure. And then, like, you spy her from across a party, fair and true. But then when you finally talk to her, she talks, like, in iambic pentameter, like a huge nerd, and you're like, never mind. Turn the car around, Miyazaki. I don't want to get betrothed in fair Verona. Hang on, we've completed our orders yet again. This time, we need to build a small trapper's camp and get five meat. Understandable. Have a good day. Small trapper's camp. And you want us to get meat out of that, you said. Meat. You can get meat out of these. Okay. Who knew? The more you know. Put you right there for the time being. Now, is there like a housing overlay that I can get or do I do the math myself? Because right now we have six capacity. We have 13 gamers, so we could use some more housing without it. I guess it's pretty cheap. Ten wood is uh, it ain't breaking the bank. Let's put it that way. Hi, Tomo. Oh, it tells you in the top left. It, t it does tell you in the top left. Thank you. Hi, Tomo. Quite a hearty meow he's got there. Oh, you guys are good meat farmers. Hang on. Times two? I'm used to the plus twos. I don't know about the times two. Uh, hello. Let's get one of you then. Let's get another uh, beaver involved here. And then let's get two lizards on the meat producing factory. Hold alt to see all employment. Yo! They were cooking with this. Let me see here. Break it open. How many tools we got? Are these, what are tools? I can find them. These are crafting resources. These are eggs. This is my food. Is there an icon I'm missing for tools? Tools gives us half a rep and amber pouch. This would give us stone, meat, and grain. Maybe we just go primary resources first. We do have 30 tools though. You know what? I mean, if we get more rep faster, we beat the tutorial faster, right? Let's assign one human being here and then choose a reward. Huge. Great job so far. Five meat in the small trapper's camp. Let's go 2x. I see that we have three meat now. They're taking a break, that's fine. It has been 10 minutes of uninterrupted work, so I can understand it. A new season! Clearance, this is the harvest season.
Take forever with the eggs, bro. Okay, what about you? Welcome new people or send them to the Citadel for four eggs. I don't know what we do with Amber. I know that people work for us though. So I'm gonna say we'll assign a worker to this one and, and bring him some vegetables. I'm more than happy b bringing them some vegetables. Amber is money for trading. All right, I'm not all about that lifestyle. I keep to myself. Grain, clay, and roots, or leather. Let's start with two individuals. And orders are ready to complete. I'm kind of zooming. Build a smokehouse. Now, first, I should do right by my people. Build some more housing without compromising our movement ability too much. Everybody will be content in a domicile. Build a smokehouse. Enable meat in the jerky recipe. I feel like that's something that a, uh, a less dignified streamer would make fun of, but not me. Smokehouse. Enable meat in the jerky recipe and make 20 meat. I'm just waiting for these quests to come to fruition as well, because I think we got more people coming to the base. The circle's glowing. What circle? There's lots of circles on the screen right now. Choose a blueprint. Smokehouse. And... They, oh, this circle. Listen, you gotta understand that this is kind of like being in uh, like a submarine when I don't know anything about submarines. You said the circle is glowing. One, two, three four five six seven and it has a circle around it eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty there's thirty circles on the screen right now okay so it wouldn't kill you to be a little bit more specific you know the, how frustrated you feel when you watch me play a puzzle game um, where you're like literally just flip the shape and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't, if you think you're smart, why don't you give it a try? That's how I feel when you have access to the entire dictionary's worth of words and you choose inadequate ones to get your point across. You've got the, you've got the magical spells, Gandalf. All you got to do is string them together. You know the words of power. Instead, people are like, look at the circle. Brother, you got to be a little, you got to have some specificity in your discourse here. Some of us are ESL. Okay, that's a really good excuse, but some of you aren't. <laughs> you have to keep yourselves honest. I don't know, like, person to person who it applies to and who it doesn't, okay? I only speak English, really. So I take pride in making an effort to speak it as well as possible. Am I right, fellow Skibbity Riz? Okay, hang on. Let me, let me remember what I was doing here. We were building a smokehouse. The smokehouse should be close to the trapper camp. It would be nice if it also touched the warehouse. Sure, that should be fine. You're close enough to where the meat gets made. Sounds right to me. Two remain bereft of house in Fair Verona. Welcome to the forestry district. And then you are a good meat producer. Always appreciate a good autosave. Well, I'm definitely not repeating that, Librarian, but you're not wrong. Maybe you are, I don't know. I don't know the stats, personally. <laughs> Wait, why are people upset, bro? Their resolve is getting worse? Oh, because there's looming darkness. Bro, I don't control the weather. They don't like the storm? 
Well, then this game is not modeled accurately. Every time I'm like, you know what's nice? Nice weather. Everyone in my chat is like, no, no, no. I'm not like other girls. I actually like it when the weather's bad. And I'm like, no, you don't. And they're like, no, I actually do. Unlike other people, I like to read. And I'm like, I don't buy it, man. They've, I, I want to put all the rain enjoyers into an MRI machine. And see if they're telling the truth. I guess like uh, I could just put them in a polygraph. That's probably like a little better. What's your problem? What's the exclamation mark? No one in this building is working? Do, is, is, do we have none stored meat because we're eating too much of it? Read the order. Enable meat in the jerky recipe. Thank you. Enable meat in the jerky recipe. Remove shrimp. You're right, it, rain enjoying is one thing. Snow enjoying is a whole different thing. But I, I believe that people, like they come by it honestly. People come to Vancouver in like January and they're like, man, it's amazing. It's not that cold and you guys don't have snow. And then after like a week here, they're like, I kind of miss the snow. I'm like, really, do you miss waking up like 60 minutes early for four months so you can go out, put on like a, 10 layers and then get one of those Canadian tire scrapers and go out to your windshield. I miss that? Then you are truly lost. It has some, uh, I mean, walking in the snow is annoying too. Shoveling snow, I mean, it's like... It's kind of like raking leaves, except you can't choose when you do it. So I can see, like, the positives and I can see the negatives. Let's put it that way. Shoveling snow is like a free workout. I agree. I have lots of issues with the statement, but I agree. The problem is um, you may not want to take your free workout when you woke up like seven minutes late on your tightly controlled routine in the morning and you absolutely have to shovel all of the snow out of your driveway just so you can back your car out for the privilege of getting to work without being late so you don't get yelled at. And then also while you're gone, it snows over the driveway that you just shoveled and then you got to figure out how you're getting back into your driveway now that it's coated in snow again. Grain bags or efficient brewing? I want grain bags. I don't want people to starve to death. Although, if they were hungrier, they would get drunk faster, so we'd probably consume less beer. The rain beats the snow, no doubt about it. But... Sun does beat cloud. So there is like, I mean, there, there's some merit to the weather, you know, worldwide. Your farms are on fire. No, they're not. They're being harvested right now because it's the clearance season. Sorry, I should do this as well. And probably this as well. And then I put you over here. Oh, maybe we don't want a, a dangerous glade quite yet. Maybe we'd rather clear here. It makes perfect sense. Okay, orders are ready to complete. Rain is cozy. Me when I don't have anything to do. Sorry. <laughs> that was really dismissive. And yet, I apologize for the way it was received. I don't apologize for the, its place of origin because I still, I don't necessarily regret what I said. Um, let me see here. Just give me the vegetables, bro. Give me more people, give me the vegetables. And then I think we just need one more house. Pop it down. Choose a blueprint, brewery. Tough word to say, honestly. 
pop the brewery down right in the middle of town. You know why? We don't support drunk driving. So we're gonna put this in walking distance to everything. Read more about food. Each spe species can only withstand a certain number of hum hunger stacks before, I can't read, before dying of starvation. To see the exact number of species can survive, go to the species section in the encyclopedia. There's an encyclopedia. This is in the encyclopedia? This is like the, the almanac? Even if you grow vegetables, the amount of food you produce will soon become insufficient for a growing population. You have to process your raw food and thus multiply it. As most recipes yield more goods than the raw ingredients. Okay, Isaac, evil Isaac Newton be like, uh, just add heat something to create matter. I'm just, it's a game. I'm not trying to like say that they don't know physics because if anything, I'm not the great physics knower, but yeah, yeah, I get it. Eat food to not be hungry anymore. Yeah, 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 I understand. Enable barrels in the ale recipe and then make 20 ales. You can't even reach that glade, by the way. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna minus two you on that one. I think we're making it easily. Human beings, probably the best brewers out there, I would say. Coffee, root beer, regular beer. We enable ale, enable barrels. Enable barrels. We got 105 barrels. Holy. Now make 20 ale. White trees equals they're not in range. You know what? When you're right, you're right. I can't really be mad about that. Just deliver that stuff that I move you right here. And then come back, come back. Twenty ale in the brewery. Dude, the lizards, they're loving life. The lizards are happy. Why? They're in houses, they're comfortable, and we have a sacred pyre, whatever that means. I'm, I'm for it. It's because they got jerky. They love jerky. You may want to start clearing trees close to your hearth. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna plus two you on that. Maybe we need to build another woodcutter's cabin or stop going to glades for a minute. I guess it's just a tutorial, so I I don't need to stress about it like too too much. But we all jerk down here, Georgie. That's a, that's a funny statement. When are you building the first McDonald's for your people? I don't know, like I'm gonna say 1953? Somewhere in that vicinity? I still think one of the most interesting, I, would, I wouldn't read an entire book on this probably, but I would certainly watch a 20 minute video explaining why like what was in the water in the 1950s that led so many restaurants to become fast food national or international chains there's got to be so many interesting factors right the invention of the interstate the proliferation of like uh commercial air travel refrigerated trucks like i uh, people working more outside of the home. It's an interesting... Because I, I feel like... What was the last... Invention... Like the last food chain that went like... International. Chipotle was like 15 years ago or something like that. Has there been anything huge since then? Sometimes five guys, okay, five guys is probably post Chipotle. Jolie B, they got a couple locations in, in Vancouver, maybe. Sweet Green. Sweet Green hasn't made it here yet. I feel like they always start in like 
In the 1950s, they started in like Ohio and then made it through the rest of the world. Now it's always like they start in Midtown Manhattan or Los Angeles, but then half of them fizzle out before they manage to make it out of the United States. Like, I don't know if we're ever going to get a, um, a Sweet Greens in Vancouver. I don't know if it's going to make it. And what's the other one? The, um, what's that Mediterranean place that started in New York that everyone's going crazy for? Cava. <laughs> I don't know if we're getting the Cava. You think the market's oversaturated? Yeah. I mean, there is like a, like... On every block within the city, there's like four different fast casual restaurants. Hang on, order's ready to complete. But I like that. I would hate to see that go away. My ale has been brewed. We do have Nando's up here. I do like it. But then one of the Nando's burned down like three months ago. So our, our Nando's supply in Vancouver, I'm pretty sure it got cut in half. We might only have one Nando's left. A tavern. Hang on. should really be adjacent to the brewery. <laughs> Bro, I'm out of space. My people aren't going to be able to move. Whatever. When a restaurant burns down, that gives me the ick for the chain, personally. Well, like... I think it burned down because like an adjacent restaurant had a fire. So it wasn't even like their fault. So you shouldn't have the ick over Nando's in my opinion. Oh, brother, I got to get more fabric, which means I got to build a crude workstation. I ain't got the space for it, man. Crude workstation. That's industry. Crude workstation. And then what do we... What makes fabric? I guess we'll find out once we finish building it. That beautiful part of a city builder where you're like, everything's beautiful before it completely falls apart. You need... Oh, we got plant fiber. We can do that. Hate to have the beavers working on the, the crude workstation, but it is what it is. What do we got over here? A drizzling... Worm tongue nest. Requires a camp with a gold recipe or better. What, what are we doing here? Priority. Um, one. This seems sensible. We can move the camp over here when this resource node is gone. Why aren't you building roads? Because the tutorial has not told me to uh, build roads yet. We need fiber. When the tutorial tells me, we shall do it. It never does? Well, then we may never. If you, and this is uh, said with love, by the way. If you play your games to, like, maximize your efficiency this much, you're like, teacher, you know, they didn't tell you about the roads. When are you going to tell the rest of the class about the roads? Um, you better be getting 100% in every class in school, and you better also be employee of the month every month at work. Otherwise... I'm not disrespecting you for min-maxing. However, you're maxing min-maxing in the most minimal place to bring maximum value to your life. Like in a broad sense, you're min, you're max-minning actually by min-maxing 
something that should be mined when other aspects of your life should be maxed. Like if you're out here, like I know the tutorial hasn't told you, but you should really build some roads, but you got dirty dishes in the sink. Brother, you're maxing some mins and you're minning some maxes, quite frankly. But I put all my skill points into bullshit. All right, I'm going to say that's an adequate defense. I'm going to say that's an adequate defense without a doubt. Hang on, what's the problem here? Small Trapper's Camp is now devoid of nodes. We will move you up here. Oh! And then we need a Woodcutter's Camp. You guys are taking forever over here, just for the record. Hey, what's going on over here? Hang on, we got lots of stuff. Break it open. Yeah, yeah, we'll just go, we'll go stone mode on this one. Stone, stone's fine. Investigate that. And then also... We need space so you're not having to walk through this glade. So I'm actually going to go crazy. I'm going to build another woodcutter's camp right here. And I'm going to mark all these trees for deletion. Busy yourself. You should busy yourself. Now! Do you know about the stampede sandwich? Turns out Canada's crazy. Um, I don't claim Alberta. I know that in their minds, they're the only real Canadians or at least the realest Canadian, but in the rest of Canada, we, we pick and choose which aspects of Alberta we consider emblematic of the Canadian condition, which by the way, is true of all provinces, including British Columbia. I'm sure there's parts of British Columbia that people from Alberta are like, yeah, Canadians live there, but that part is not really Canada. Like our good weather, for example, that's not really like emblematic of the rest of the country. Hang on, you're idle? What, bro, build some, then make some plant fibers. It, it doesn't really seem like it's my responsibility to like give you busy work. I had nobody, oh, because we couldn't build the tavern before. Bro, 0% unemployment? I solved every crisis. Everybody has a house, everybody has a job. Everybody's content. Nobody's happy, but everybody's content. Nobody's starving to death. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while to get things done. <laughs> all, I, all that I needed to do was follow instructions. Who knew? Are we doing something here? They're, they're taking their sweet time. I've been to every major province and I still count Alberta best. Okay, but like, it's funny to me that you're like, promoting some national unity, but there's a, an interesting part of that sentence. Every major province. So what I want to know is what provinces have you not been to? I'm not going to ask you which ones you don't think are major. Your answer to the first question will answer the second question. I mean, there's some provinces that are not major. No disrespect, New Brunswick is one. You have to go to PEI though. PEI is not a major province like in a population sense, but it is unique. Same with Newfoundland. Nunavut, that's a territory. It's two different things. Now, if you ask me what's the difference, I don't really know. <laughs> it's something like, it's the difference between like affiliates and partners on Twitch. It's like there's a different lounge for them at the party at TwitchCon. Choose a cornerstone. How about Two to all meat production. Me when I'm working at the cock factory. And now finally they're producing some freaking fabric, bro. Take forever with the order. Lizards are love and life. We almost got max rep. Almost everybody has their need for leisure fulfilled. Well, brother, honestly, I, don't, I got no problem. We got lots of food. Make some pickled goods. Make a pack of crops. Give a dog a bone. This old man is going home.
It, I've created the perfect society. Cicero was only half right. You need a garden, you need a library, you need 12 houses, and everybody needs an axe so they can chop down trees. Shane Dawson voice. I never gave my dog a bone. I never... I, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> then I... I mean, I don't really know anything about the situation, but I'm going to plus to you because I recognize the reference. I don't know if I want to go to a dangerous glade, quite frankly. I think I'd, I would be content to go here and chop these trees down. Build roads. My reaction when I'm when I'm Dwight Eisenhower and my advisors ask me what I want them to do. Newcomers. Get 30 roots. Two lizards. We, do we really need more people right now? Four versus five? I'll take four. And then... Holy, bro. We have a few lizards. We're about to have... Let's go human houses. Lizards are already happy. Beavers, they're happy as long as they got a tree to cut down. One human house. Probably my favorite kind of house, to be honest with you. And then one shelter. Most normal guy ever playing this game. I actually give humans the houses last. Come on, what are you talking about? This game is so chill. I thought that, and maybe it gets there. I thought that kind of the idea was you spend like 30 minutes building a city and then like Mother Nature's indescribable forces just destroy it. And then you rebuild like a little bit better this time. That does happen. It just happens later. Okay. All right. I mean, I appreciate a, it's a chill tutorial, bro. There's no doubt about that. Settlement complete. I'm the greatest gamer of all time. What the heck is this? Tutorial to town. <laughs> the world is a vast, ever-changing place, and at its heart lies the smoldering city. Enter the smoldering city and use the resources you've gathered to buy the Obsidian Archive Level 1 upgrade. Okay. You gain permanent minus two. It's perfect. Me after I added Skibbity Riz to my vocabulary. But you also get an Obsidian Archive. You've unlocked the Lorapedia. Permanent minus two to speed at which she gets impatient. 10% more Citadel resources. Or two, permanent 2% 2 reduction to fuel consumption in the hearth. You go for this because it's more XP for the future. I understand. Deeds. Finish your first game after the tutorial. Reward, Viceroy's Quarters. Ooh. Okay, let me out. I guess we click this. We could try like a little bit of a real run. If it, if it says Tutorial 3 Town, though, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> this world is governed by the eternal Blightstorm cycle. It is almost upon us, so no caravans are allowed to embark. Press the button in the lower right corner to finish the cycle. Cycle summary. You're the best of all time. I could just go faster. That's true. The Queen's Envoy. I feel like I see the roguelite elements now. Your goal as a viceroy is to reach the ancient seals with your caravan and reforge them, pushing back the Blightstorm. You're almost ready to venture out on your own. Choose any map tile inside your embarkation range to begin. I choose... to go... to here. To embark, you must first choose a caravan that will become the foundation of your town's population. Caravans. I choose 
this one. I choose this one. Understood. Difficulty settler. Let's go pioneer. Let's go slight, just one slightly higher. Only thing worse than a game being too hard is the game being too easy. Lastly, use all of your embarkation points to take extra goods with you. You are finally ready to embark on your own. Remember, there is always a way out. Experiment and adapt. May the storm be gentle on you. Okay, bye! Is this Catan for Gen Z? I was going to say no, but then I remembered someone said it's your fault for playing on 1X. So I'm content to rain down a little shit on Gen Z, yeah. Watches their movies on fucking 2X. What are you doing, bro? Stop and smell the damn roses. Why don't you just do what I do and skip the movie altogether and just read the Wikipedia synopsis?